welcome into, into the show uh, Auckland Uni's Professor of Pop- Population Nutrition. Hope I've said that right. Uh, Professor Boyd Swinburne. Boyd, good afternoon. Here, Leah. Uh, well, you, you, I know you heard a little bit of a Lewis's story there with mm. his journey on Saxenda, which he he received all up about nine months worth, but he stretched it out over about a year and a half. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on it because it is kind of becoming um, ex- more accessible. We've got Ozempic, we've got Saxenda, and now we've got this uh, Monjaro, which uh, it's not here, but what the British government's doing. And... Um, originally, though, boy, they were developed for type 2 diabetes, which, of course, they are still being used for. What do you make of people using these medications, though, when they don't have diabetes? Oh, listen, I think um, the drug was developed for diabetes and then found to have this uh, quite remarkable effect on reducing weight. And uh, obesity is a huge problem amongst us, and mm. we need we need all the help we can get to deal with it. Um, up until now, we haven't had very effective medications at all, and um, uh, previous medications have only had really small effects. They've had um, a lot of side effects, and so they haven't been really satisfactory. But this new generation of drugs is really hitting, uh, hitting the globe pretty seriously, mm. and I've just been to the obesity conference um, in Sydney for the Australian New Zealand VC Society Conference. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of talk about that. And, boy, the number of these look-alike drugs and also these drugs in, medic- in combination with other uh, um, uh, um, compounds um, mm. to make them, make them even more effective, um, it's going to come through in a huge pipeline. So, uh, you know, I think we're going to see this as a major feature. And, of course, it's, a, it's such a, a, a winner for the pharmaceutical companies. This is, yes. They've been looking for this holy grail um, for <laughs> decades and decades. You know, if only you could find a really effective drug against um, uh, for weight loss, um, then you'd make your gazillions. And that's exactly what's happened with Novo Nordisk, Nordisk uh, leading the way, but all the other pharmaceutical companies are jumping in and trying to get their own versions. Sure. But but uh, there's no silver bullet. This isn't the silver bullet, though, is it, Boyd? Because we have to balance, meaning exercise and diet, surely. Oh, no, absolutely. And I, I don't think you'd find anybody that says we shouldn't do that. But, yeah. you know, there's a, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of prejudice against people with weight problems uh, in society, a huge amount of weight bias. And mm. then something like this comes along and people say, oh, you know, it's just your weak willpower, you're ignorant, why don't you pull your socks up and just, um, you know, eat less yeah. and exercise <laughs> yes. more and so on. Yeah. And, um, you know, that is, that is really damaging and really wrong, um, under, thinking about the world of obesity in that way. You know, we haven't had a, a massive global collapse of willpower or increase in ignorance. <laughs> over the last uh, several decades that's led to this um, obesity epidemic. You know, it's driven by the obes- obesogenic environment that we live in. And mm. so putting the blame on individuals is really putting it in the wrong place. I think we need to think about it in the same way as we think about um, blood pressure medications and and cholesterol medication. You say, I'm, I'm taking a statin for my high cholesterol. You don't blame me for my terrible lifestyle and my lack of willpower. It's a combination of yep, behaviour and diet and genes and so on, just like obesity. And yet yep. we, with obesity, we add a lot of uh, emotional baggage to it. I think we just treat it like blood pressure and high cholesterol. These are okay. drugs. They're going to help you. They're going to reduce your risk of complications later. Um, you know, yeah. I think it's really valuable. Well, I mean, if you, you know, uh, if you go... If you can lose weight and, you know, get yourself into a healthy uh, range, in the long run, you, you know, you are sa- you'll be saving the health system so much money uh, as, as we get older and, and if we haven't curbed our weight, you know, that's when you get your heart diseases and your hips go and there's all sorts of things that go with it. So, oh, you know, it may, it may, but I've got a question for you, you though, Boyd, because more and more people <coughs> we know are categorised now as obese or even morbidly obese. Mm -hmm. And children particularly, sadly. But on the other hand, we're bombarded with messages that any size is beautiful. We can't fat shame. So how do we help those that need to lose weight without being, um, 
you know, then told you're fat shaming somebody. Yeah, there's a bit of tension in there, and uh, this this rise of sort of uh, healthy healthy at any weight or the the sort of fat tolerance, fat acceptance kind of movements, um, that's been in response to this um, social bias, this prejudice against people with weight problems. Um, and they're trying to sort of hold up the, 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 the CSTM. These are, these are real people, you know, you can't yeah. judge them just by what they look like. And it's trying to f- answer that social prejudice aspect of it, not the, not the medical and, and health side of it. I mean, there's no doubt when you look at the data that mm. um, obesity does lead to lots of uh, diseases down the track. And, yeah. um, I, I, you know, your, your last uh, caller, Lewis, um, yeah. was, was talking about something which I think is really important, and that's the sort of the interaction. You know, he was talking about once you lose a bit of weight, you know, you're feeling better about yourself, people are, you know, supporting you, it makes you more likely to be active and eat well and things. So there's a, there's a virtuous cycle on the way down just as there is a vicious cycle on the way up, you know, people yeah. who who leave who leave school and they they've got obesity, they are much less likely to go to university. They're much less likely to get a good job, to get married, to live in a yeah. have a good income, and so on. And that in itself then um, begets more obesity. So, um, you know, we've got to think of it in circles. You know, there's a vicious cycle taking us up, and if you can break that cycle, then the, you you trigger off some virtual cycles, like Lewis was talking about. To, to uh, improve overall um, uh, health.